was your very first job and what was something, however small it may be, that you learned that you've continued to take with you throughout your career? So my first job in high school was working as a sales associate on the floor at The Gap, the retailer The Gap. I love it. Uh, I was drawn to it because of their apparel and my need to make some money while I was a high school student because my parents weren't just, uh, uh, reminded me that money didn't grow on trees. And also I would get a close discount, which was great. But what I learned is that the most effective way to make a sale is to first listen to the customer and find out what their needs are before you start sharing what you have to say. And that lesson has stuck with me. My first job, I was a sophomore in high school. I was, uh, I was announcing the names at the Little League, local Little League field, announcing the names, running the scoreboard, doing the uh, scorer's book. Toward the end of the year, I was asked to help pick the all-star team. Uh, and, and the all-star coach asked me to, to sort of crunch the numbers from, from all, all the stats I had from the scorer's book and, and try to and try to give him uh, you know, some suggestions on who should be on the team. That's a lot of what we do on an everyday basis at S&P Global Market Intelligence. We, you know, we, we look at data points and then we talk to industry experts and we try to figure out you know, what's driving the trends and where the, where the trends might, might go to. So it's pretty much uh, exactly <laughs> what, what, he, what he was doing there when I, when I was uh, 15 years old. <laughs> so my very first job was actually in a free trade zone in the Dominican Republic when I was 16 years old. I was um, answering customer calls and they were not always the most pleasant calls as you can imagine. It's a small world and kindness and, and being respectful to everyone else goes a long way. Whether it is the next call that you take after the person that was not your most pleasant call or whether it's the person that's sitting next to you. Some of the people that were sitting right next to me were key whether it was through my personal or professional life 10 plus years later. So I would say that is a lesson that I've carried back from when I was 16 years old taking phone calls in, uh, in a free trade zone in the Dominican Republic. The first job I had was working at my dad's business. He had an appliance and electronics store um, in a small town in Georgia and I was running the movie club where we rented movies uh, to people because he sold the VCRs to them and then they had a movie club where they would send the movies to home with folks once a, you know, I think we had like 50 movies or something at the time but people could rent them. I learned how to use computers because I had to check people out on the computer. I learned how to interface with a customer and, and spend time with them and, and make them happy and see how sometimes they weren't happy, right? So uh, just learned that customer experience, I think, from being part of a, a retail facing store. So my very first job, my parents owned a motel and a restaurant and I started working there serving tables about seven years old. And then uh, it was a kind of more of a coffee shop. So making sandwiches, serving coffee, making ice cream and everything. And the one thing I learned about it is you really don't want to work with your family in a business. Uh, the support that you want to provide and everything is great, but it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to maintain uh, family relationships through the pressures of owning a business as well. So I've tried to keep those two things separate in my life thus since then. I worked for my grandmother's jewelry store on Main Street in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And what was so neat, unique about that job is that you were helping people make a decision at a milestone in their life. They were getting married, they were buying a wedding gift, they were um, buying a gift for someone having a baby. And so you were there to advise them on what was often an expensive purchase, a one-time purchase, and I really learned a lot about service and about connecting and about empathizing with individuals in that situation. So I use those skills today. I went the route of the local country club, the caddy. Uh, enjoyed it, did it for like 10 years all the way through college. Uh, you know, as a little city kid who was the first generation to go to college at that point, you know, a lot of those guys that I used to caddy for, you know, gave me some really good advice of what to do, how to be, uh, taught me kind of professional service skills, you know, and how to accommodate for people that are, you know, you know, doing something else while I'm just carrying two bags, you know. Everything in Caddyshack was pretty close to true, uh, but uh, it was it was definitely it was definitely worth it. it from a professional services standpoint, it, I, I, in most cases, I, I usually attribute it to where it probably put me today. But. I was a busboy in a Chinese restaurant. Uh, I was 14, and I didn't. They spoke fluent Chinese, and I did not. And I remember uh, having frustration with the fact that I couldn't understand folks and I, my mom said to me, uh, this was, and it's carried me through my life, is bloom where you're planted.
Hmm. So I figured it out, learned how to communicate in quasi sign language, uh, learned how to cook a Chinese dish that, uh, that I loved and, and turned out to enjoy it. So it really is a perspective of, you know, take the, the best of a, of a situation that's challenging and turn it into something good.